Are you frustrated with Google Ads because you feel like you're just constantly giving free donations to Google? And what I mean by free donations is that every week you're spending more in ad spend to Google Ads and getting no sales or conversions in return. Let's be honest, the only reason that any of us starts a Google Ads marketing campaign is that we wanna get more sales, leads, or conversions for our own business. So if we're not getting those sales, leads, or conversions, all we're doing is willingly donating money to Google. And trust me, they don't need any more money. Are you sure about that? Now, over the past 10 years, I couldn't tell you the exact number of different accounts that I've either reviewed or optimized, but it would be well into the thousands. And when I look into all of those accounts, I can actually break down the three core areas that you need to have set right if you're gonna see success with Google Ads. And those three things are, you need to firstly have the correct structure in your Google Ads account. You need to then also have a highly effective landing page, and then you need to have your pricing or your offer set correctly. And if you can get all of those three things right, you will see success with Google Ads. But if you have one of those things which is not right, you won't see any success. So if you are currently not seeing success with Google Ads, I wanna show you how you can review those three factors so that you can start getting those more sales, leads, and conversions that your business needs. And let's start with your Google Ads account structure. Now, a common problem that I see is that people have an overly complicated Google Ads structure, or they will have an account structure that you can just see there's been no thought or no critical thinking about how to lay out that account structure for success. And the majority of the time when I see an underperforming account, generally what you see is a mismatch of campaigns in that they tried a performance max campaign and that didn't work. So they keep that performance max campaign running and then start a shopping campaign. Or if they're a search-based business, they'll start a search campaign and then try and add in a display campaign. And then they'll, if that search campaign's not working, they'll then add a second search campaign. And there's just no strategy at all. And that is a telltale sign that you're gonna not see success with Google Ads. So what you need to do before you start any Google Ads campaign, or before you take on a new client, what you need to really drill down and you need to ask is this. And what is it that you want Google Ads to achieve for your business? Because this will be different for different businesses. Let me give you an example. I had an e-commerce client that I took on last year, and when I spoke to the owner, the biggest thing that she stressed with me is that she doesn't want the account just to be driven by ROAS. Because what she found is that the previous digital agencies were just focusing on ROAS and they weren't actually looking at growing her customer base. The reason for why she was so passionate about growing her customer base is because when they look at their offline conversions, they have a very, very high converting email funnel and a large app community. And when they showed me their app engagement figures, the picture became very, very clear in that they have a long lifetime value of clients that once they get them onto their email database, they are highly successful at not only converting them for individual sales or follow-up sales, they're highly successful at converting those people over to their app users. And then when they run their push promotions every single week, sometimes multiple push promotions, through their apps every single week, they get more and more sales. And that's why for this business, they needed a Google Ads account set up that wasn't just purely focused on ROAS. Yes, ROAS was an important factor, but if they could just achieve somewhere between a three and a half to a five ROAS, as long as they were getting more and more email signups every single week, that was gonna be a highly profitable Google Ads campaign for them. Versus another client that I have where they just need to get five phone calls or five inquiries every single day versus another client who needs a cost per acquisition of under $10 to make it work. And that's why rather than just going in and setting up your account, you need to firstly really drill down on what is the main objective of this Google Ads account? Because that will then let you know how you need to go through and structure your account. So what I wanna do right now is let's jump into a screen share and I wanna firstly show you an example of an account structure that I use. And then I also wanna show you some different examples of accounts to, to show you that sometimes the most simple account setups can be the most effective. Let's go and have a look. All right, so what you're looking at here is an example account structure for Google Ads. Now, this is actually a real life account structure that I have used for a client, but I have added in some extra different notes in here just so you can see the principles so you know how to tailor it for your own account. Now, 
Generally, what I do do is I will look at breaking in my account to two different types of campaigns. And these campaigns go beyond whether you're using a search or shopping or a performance max or display campaign. And it's the difference between an always on campaign and a sales or promotional campaign. Now, you may be taking on a business or for your own business and you don't really do any sales or promotions throughout the year. And if that's the case, you'll just be looking at building an always on campaign. And with these always on campaigns, what these are, these are your product or your service category based campaigns. And there's three core types of campaigns that you would use for these. And this would either be your search campaigns, your shopping campaigns, or your performance max campaigns. And what the core factor on this is that you're focusing on individual product category campaigns with different ad groups for your search and shopping campaigns. And then obviously they would have different asset groups for your performance max campaigns. But the core thing is these are your product category or service category based campaigns. So for example, if you're an e-commerce store, you would have your different product category campaigns. And in some cases I have five or six different performance max campaigns. And that's for larger e-commerce stores where they've got some really clear different product categories. So for example, like men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing, and infant and baby's clothing. We put them into different campaigns. And then we have the subsequent ad groups or asset groups underneath those. So for example, like men's pants and men's shirts. Or for a service-based campaign, there are ones where I have two or three different search campaigns happening. Let's just say, for example, you're an electrician and you're focusing on air conditioning, general maintenance or electrical repairs, and also solar. You'd break them down into three different campaigns, being your air conditioning, your general electrical work, and then also your solar campaigns. And then if you are a business or you do have a client that's looking at taking on some sales or promotional campaigns, this is what I'll generally add them in in display or YouTube campaigns. And the reason for that is that that then allows me to aggressively increase these budgets without them affecting my always on campaigns. And with these sales and promotional, sometimes as well, when we're outside of sales or promotional periods, I'll use them to revert to focus on either general branding or app downloads and email subscribers. Now, when you look at this structure, I don't want you to take that away and copy it, which you're more than welcome to do. But what I wanted to show you here is how you go about and put together an account structure so that you can tailor it for your own individual business or your own client's needs. And now I wanna show you two accounts to show you how different your account structures can look. Now, this is for a client who, what they're really looking at here is they're wanting to always achieve a cost per conversion of under $10. And you can see we put a structure together that has allowed them to do it and that they've actually seen a really constant stream of conversions which is underneath that $10 mark. But as you can see, because we've been able to achieve that, we've now been able to increase the amount that we're spending, which has also seen an increase in their total conversion value and the number of conversions that they're achieving. And this one is all done off three campaigns. And I'll be honest with you, we could potentially get away with one Performance Max campaign. The only reason that we've got two other supplementary search campaigns, which are these ones here, is because they run us in a very specific specific business niche, which allows them for certain government grants, which is what this one is about. Also in their marketplace, they've got some really highly competitive competitors. So they've put in place a competitor campaign and that's really to stop other competitors taking over their market share. And that's why they're not so much phased around this conversion value cost score or the ROI score for them. And then I wanna show you another account. Now, this is the one that I was talking about previously where they're really looking at really increasing the number of people that are signing up into their email funnel. And as you can see here, look, it's achieving a 3.89, which for our e-commerce campaign is good, but it's not off the charts. But when you look at these contacts through here is that remembering that this was the core driver that they wanted. And so far already in April, they've grown their database by nearly 8,000 new email subscribers. So that's 8,000 potential new clients that they've got coming into their business. And this one is a little bit more complicated in that we've got our core performance max campaigns, which are based around their product category. Categories. We then do also have some branded campaigns. And then down here, we've also got our promotional campaigns, which is our video and our display campaigns. So the main point that I really wanna stress that I wanted to point out there is that it doesn't really matter what your account structure looks like because that'll look different for each individual client. The most important point that I want you to take away from that is that you need to take the time to lay out and think about how you're gonna structure your account and how is that account structure gonna meet your clients or your business's goals. Now, I do wanna add in another little sub point there that 
once you've got your account structure set up correctly, if you are really gonna see true success with Google Ads, you need to also make sure that you've got a very clear optimization strategy. And this is where you know exactly what you're gonna be optimizing in your Google Ads accounts every single week, every month, and every 90 days. And this is a big part where I see people, they go astray, in that they either under-optimize their account or over-optimize their account. And to help you, I wanna give you access to two free tools. And that is my Google Ads Optimization Checklist. And this is one which is gonna be perfect for your search campaigns. And then for people who are focusing on e-commerce, I wanna give you access to my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist, which is gonna show you how to optimize your shopping and your Performance Max campaigns. And if you wanna get either of those checklists, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. All right, let's now get to that second all important factor of your landing pages. And this is an area where a lot of people fall down because if you have the most perfect and amazing Google Ads account, you've got high performing ads, you've got your keywords set right, you've got your structure set right. If they are then going to a poor performing landing or product page, it does not matter how much money you throw at it, it's just not going to convert. And as a simple guide, your landing page needs to tick off these three requirements. The first thing is that it needs to grab the user's attention. You don't wanna take all that time to get them to click on your ad and then they go to your landing page and it's just ugly or just not appealing. It needs to grab their attention. And then secondly, it needs to effectively communicate your message. A great landing page just isn't great product images or great images. You need to have a clear message which is focused on them, the user. Remember, they clicked on your ad for a reason. So when they get to your landing page, you need to confirm with them that they are at the right spot in that your product or your service is gonna help them fulfill their need. And then that's where it comes to the third key factor in that you need to be able to provide a solution. So when it comes to your landing page, don't get so caught up in what is the correct font which is converting right now in 2023 or what is the best color scheme to use now. Those things do have a level of importance, but if you focus on those three core factors of having a landing page which grabs their attention effectively communicates your message and offers an easy solution, you've got the core foundation of a highly converting landing page. And some other key sub points that I would give there is that you need to also build up some own credibility. And a great way of doing that is either through awards that you've won, testimonials or reviews. And then what you also wanna do is you wanna de-risk the transaction. And what I mean by that is that you wanna remove the risk, especially if they don't know of your brand or they know of you personally. And a great way of doing that is by offering your returns, your warranties, or even your cashback offers. Now, I know that that is a very simple overview for your landing pages. And because this is such an important topic, if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you where you can watch some greater training and some greater teaching that I've got for you all about your landing pages. And then that brings us to the last point, which is your price point or your offer. Now, I will be honest that this is sometimes the hardest one to get through, especially if you've got a client who just won't budge on their offer or won't budge on their price. And the reality is, is that your product or your service is only worth what someone is willing to pay. So what I wanna do, because obviously pricing is gonna be different for all different types of services, all different types of products, and all different types of locations. What you really wanna get down to, what you really wanna break into is that, is the issue your Google Ads campaign or is it the price point of your product or your service? And a great way of finding that out is to go into your Google Analytics, and what you wanna be looking at, is your product or is your service converting on other platforms? So for example, you're getting really high levels of conversions from your social campaign, really high levels of conversions from your organic campaign, and it is only your Google Ads campaign which is not converting. You then do know that the problem is either with your Google Ads account or your landing page. But if the other situation is happening in that you're just not getting any conversions from anywhere, you then know that it could be an issue of your price point or your service offering. So that's a really easy way that you can look to break it down as to whether to find out the problem is with your Google Ads account or your landing page or whether the problem is a greater problem with your pricing. And that's what I've always found has been the easiest way, is just compare your Google Ads campaign with your other marketing efforts. And if nothing is converting, look at your price of your service, or if it's only your Google Ads, which is not converting, then you can go in and take a deeper dive into your Google Ads account. Alrighty, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy, and I'm your 15,000 hour 
Google Ads Master. And if you would like to learn more about how you can improve your landing pages for your Google Ads campaigns, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.